Hey, what's up guys? This is Jeff with Game Stork, and it's time for our Game Stork Daily News. And there's tons of it. Lots of stuff happened this weekend. Also, lots of games that have been confirmed and or announced coming to the Nintendo Switch. Some games, one of which is really disappointing that as of right now, we don't get that game. Like, it's pretty decisive that this game isn't coming, but we'll reveal that in a minute. Let's jump right in. Game Stork. Delivering news, reviews, and playthroughs like a newborn baby. So right off the bat, we look at a special edition game coming to the Nintendo Switch, and this is a special edition version of Violet, which is coming this fall to the Nintendo Switch. If you've never played Violet, it's a very interesting game. It's almost, uh, the closest thing I can equate this to is like a point and click adventure uh, where you go and you uh, really just kind of get sucked into this world that you're walking around trying to escape and you are constantly with everything inside of you trying to find your way out, solving puzzles. And the closest thing I can relate th this to something like Monkey Island, uh, which that's a very uh, favorable thing to relate it to. I'm not telling you it's that good. I'm just telling you that it's a similar play style and it's something, you know, to look at as far as a special edition. I know a lot of people complain when this, they did play through this game that it didn't quite live up to what it could uh, towards the end of the game. Now, personally, I only played it. I didn't play through the entire thing. Being on the Nintendo Switch, that might change that. Uh, but if it is a special edition coming, perhaps they uh, have upgraded some of that and made really uh, fix some of the issues and made it really much easier uh, to play, to walk through, and things like that. So, speaking of new games, uh, there is a game called Prodigy. This is an, a new tactical RPG uh, which is played with figurines, and this has been announced to be coming to the Nintendo Switch, and it's really, really awesome. Prodigy is a turn based tactical RPG featuring high quality figurines, uh, and this, I, I'm not really sure about the board, I'm certain. Maybe this does work with the Nintendo Switch. As far as I know right now, though, this is for PC, and I'm not sure how they're going to do the Switch version. I do hope that they have the board because it's really cool. And what you do is you manipulate magical objects to fight eight uh, epic battles, follow a heroic campaign, and challenge other players. Uh, so Prodigy's gameplay focuses on squad-based combat on a physical board for deep thinking and fast-paced one-on-one fights. So instead of actually going in physically and doing this, what you do is you move your figurine to spaces on these little lit-up areas on the board. It almost looks like a chessboard except it's lighted instead of actually, you know, you, you have to you can see it in the background because I have it playing there. And you drop these cards like attack and actions and things like that, and the board reads them and processes processes those into the game so that you can move a lot faster in the things that you do. Now in my eyes, this is really neat. It gives us just one more way to enjoy this these tactical based RPGs. I think it's really cool. The only thing I worry about is the small space on the board. I'm, I'm very curious how that's going to work. I'm sure there's something in order to move further or maybe it's just that the, the battle arenas in this game are, are a little bit small. That's cool. Uh, but Prodigy is a new way to play without a keyboard, mouse, joypad, joypad, anything like that. And hopefully this comes to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it looks really good. I I am one of those. Well, we know it's coming to the Switch. I'm just saying, hopefully, the board gameplay is also supported for the Nintendo Switch. And as I said, you can purchase this through the eShop, even if you miss the Kickstarter campaign. And it looks really, really neat. I'm super excited. Uh, and I've never been a huge fan of like Toys to Life style gameplay, so that's saying a lot. But again, I'm really, really excited about this one. It looks cool. And having that board there seems like it's going to streamline the entire process, making the game a little bit more interesting and make it feel like you have even more control. Now, as far as other games coming to the Nintendo Switch, Enter the Gungeon on Switch is still on track for this year. As they finalize the date, Dodge Roll Games has said that they're going to release more information in the near future. This is a game that's really neat. Now, you walk around with these sprites. It's a very old, like, retro-style art. And you walk through these dungeons and essentially just fight, and it's a lot of fun. This one is neat. I actually had this game on the PS4. I enjoyed it a lot, so I may do a Let's Play so that you can see what to expect. Uh, but this is one that I can say it's fun. Hopefully, it's not going to be expensive on the Switch. Maybe hopefully comparable to the price on the PS4, and we'll see once the time comes. As far as big companies and big news, it looks like Monolith Soft is looking for an action planner with knowledge of online games, medieval, and fantasy settings inside of games. And this is huge! Uh, Xenoblade developer Monolith Soft has put this job listing on its website, and the company is recruiting a game planner for its main branch in Tokyo, so this is big. This means that this is a big first-party game here. Uh, the person hired would be involved with creating uh, specifications of characters, actions, uh, draft, design, and construct battles and rules. Overall, Monolith wants someone who has experience with developing 
action games. Now, Monolith All Soft highlights the following as important points for the potential hire. Those with much knowledge of online games, those with much knowledge of medieval and fantasy settings, and those with much knowledge of trends, pop culture, and entertainment in overseas countries, which is the U.S., Europe, things like that. Uh, Monolith Soft is currently working on the big Switch RPG, uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which if you're like me, uh, this is, you know, this is big and we can't wait. But it seems like they're already uh, really set on what they have planned for their next title. And if you ask me, as far as them saying someone who has knowledge of medieval settings, online games, and then also entertainment in overseas countries, this sounds like a uh, Western style MMO, like a live action RPG MMO, something like that. And that would be really cool, especially considering it's set in medieval or fantasy settings, which is super neat. So I can't wait to see. It's probably going to be a long time before we see this. I doubt uh, we hear anything about this until maybe uh, mid to late 2018. Perhaps at E3, they might give a hint as to what they're working on. But most of the time, you know, when these companies like Monolith Soft or something like that uh, really starts a project, it might be three years before you get the opportunity to see what they're working on. So this is something that although we are sharing this now, although you are getting this information now, it's just to kind of get you hyped up and so that you can put this in your brain that Monolith Soft is working on something for the Nintendo Switch. They already have their next project in mind and it looks like it's going to be a online medieval and fantasy style a live action rpg games that connects with pop culture and also uh entertainment in the west which means it could be a western style rpg game which is super super cool well if you didn't know it dragon quest 11 is getting it gets a western release date in 2018 uh this is really cool they're bringing it over and i'm excited about this uh there's no question as to whether or not this uh, franchise is popular whether people want it of course they do uh this game is officially launched over in Japan on PS4 and 3DS, and it really has turned out very, very good. There's long lines, lots of people want it, and so do I. So I'm very excited to see that they're bringing this not only just over in English, but I believe this in five different languages. So, and also the platforms, although they have not been uh, confirmed, we assume that it's coming on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch, since there is a Nintendo Switch version in development for Japan. So hopefully they'll go ahead and port this when they do, right over to the Nintendo Switch in the West. And I don't know about you guys, but I will be there on day one for this one, doing cartwheels <laughs> and yeah, you know, or whatever, whatever type of cartwheel that I could accomplish, I I would do because I'm very excited about this game and uh, no matter which console I have to play it on I am going to play it but if I have an option to play it on the Nintendo Switch let's face it the Nintendo Switch just makes games better being able to take it on the go I mean just in my eyes that is an amazing thing to be able to do especially with something like Dragon Quest uh, the mainline series of Dragon Quest so it's really exciting to see that that is coming to the Nintendo uh, Switch and it's exciting to see that it's coming west well, Nintendo has a uh, really neat bundle. And if you haven't seen this, you should go over to the website. Specifically, uh, if you frequent nintendo.com.uk, uh, if uh, they, are, they have a special order for uh, 59 pounds, I guess you could say 60 pounds. Uh, but if you pre-order this from Nintendo, uh, this Pokémon Tournament DX, you get Pokémon Tournament DX, Pokémon Tournament Pro Pad Controller, and also a poster, which looks really cool. And this is all uh, at a really solid price, so it's really neat. Uh, this controller looks super cool. It looks just like the one that we talked about the other day. Uh, that was a Nico, and it's great. I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> what can you say about a really good uh, deluxe combination of things like this. Sure, Pokémon Tournament is a port, but it also comes with this cool controller, which I also see is wired. So, you know, we'll have to see exactly how that works and what's going on with that and all that good stuff. So, so not long ago at PAX East, there was a game presented called Masquerade Songs of Shadows, and it's odd combat system, beautiful, beautiful visuals. Well, it, it was really a beautiful journey for the eyes, but there was a lot to be desired when it came to combat. Now, it looks like they have done some updates and there's a lot of things coming that should be announced, but as described by its developers, this is a tactical RPG where you use powers of the elements granted to you by magical mask to enact combos and defeat enemies on your quest to investigate the disappearance, past and present, oh, disappearance of a friend, sorry, navigate a society built on intrigue and powerful artifacts to unravel the mysteries that tie the past and present together. Uh, Masquerade is really about telling a story it's Kingdom Hearts style combat will fit super well with the controls of the Switch. And let's be honest, it, it just looks really good. I personally can't wait to play this. And I'm, I'm stoked. This game looks really solid. Now to say that 
Okay, this is a Kingdom Hearts style combat. That's also leaving a lot to be desired because although the combat does look good until you get your hands on this, it's hard to compare your game or uh, a game of this persuasion up against something like Kingdom Hearts, which is just epic. Like, I guarantee you when the new Kingdom Hearts comes out, it's just, I don't know that they're, they can make enough uh, of this game. Uh, we're lucky we have digital versions because it would be extremely hard for them to try to keep up with the demand that has been placed on this game to come. And I know personally, I'm really excited about it. And I'm also excited about the future of this game coming to the Nintendo Switch. Sadly, one, <laughs> I am going to play it on the PS4 first and I'll probably replay it on the Switch when it comes just because it's been so long. I'm going to be so hungry to play this game to continue the story that I just don't want to wait another day. And you know, I know you guys can't, can't blame me. It's, it has been 10 years after all since the last one. And if you're a big fan of these series like me, you can't wait. But anyway, uh, Masquerade, it looks really solid. This is a very decent indie game. Uh, and it, it looks like one that might be a great addition uh, to our Nintendo Switch library. And it'll fit right in. Now to close out today, I do have a little bit of bad news. And we're going to mix this together with some good news. Uh, the bad news here is that it looks like Assassin's Creed Origins won't release on the Nintendo Switch at all. In a recent interview with Gaming Bolt, it looks Looks like, if I'm saying his name correctly, Ashraf Ismail uh, said we're shipping on Xbox One, Xbox One X, PS4, PS4 Pro, and PC, uh, and there are no plans to release it on Switch. And it, this is the solid answer. There's no ifs, ands, or buts here. Uh, now, if you look at this, though, the time that they spent creating this game was a time before the Nintendo Switch was announced. They probably didn't have dev kits and things like that. I know initially some people would say, well, the Assassin's Creed can't run on the Nintendo Switch. Well, no. An Assassin's Creed that's created for Xbox One X and PS4 Pro obviously isn't going to run on the Nintendo Switch. However, an Assassin's Creed Origins that is created for the Nintendo Switch could indeed run on the Switch. So this is something that although uh, we know that it's not coming, we can't necessarily say, oh, it's a power issue. But instead, right now, I have to just say something like, oh, this is because they didn't have the information. They didn't have the system stuff. It takes a long time to prep this game. You know, the development cycle in this game was an entire year longer than usual. And uh, yeah, so, you know, that's just one of those things. It's sad to me because I I would love to see Assassin's Creed Origins over on the Nintendo Switch, but perhaps uh, Ubisoft will see an opportunity uh, to bring this over, you know, once the next one's made. Like, perhaps I'll make a version of whatever comes after Assassin's Creed Origins uh, for the Nintendo Switch. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Ubisoft made Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, so they had to have had that Switch, uh, whatever it was, you know, they had to have some information. But at the same time, there are different teams working on different things, and Nintendo is very secretive. Ubisoft leaks everything, and as such, not all of these teams probably had the knowledge of what, uh, anything about the Switch, what was going to the Switch, or any of that. So these, this team obviously is not the same team that created Mario plus Rabbids, and they, I'm certain, didn't have the information and probably didn't have the manpower to port it, even if they had the opportunity. Now, the good news with this is, as just looking back on what Capcom has said with their success, that they're going to begin bringing games over the, to the Nintendo Switch, and specifically saying... Nintendo Switch versions of those games. Although we won't see Assassin's Creed, it doesn't mean that we're not going to see other Ubisoft games. Ubisoft's going to do the same thing that Capcom's doing. Mario plus Rabbids is going to sell out of the roof. I mean, it's going to be something that is amazing. And Ubisoft is going to see that when they push games out for the Nintendo Switch, they're going to sell, uh, whether Mario or not. Uh, Street Fighter, obviously, is just a reiteration of the same Street Fighter 2. No offense to the game. It's, it's you know, it, it is a solid game outside of the way of the Hado mode. But it sold extremely well. And knowing that, money always talks. So Capcom is saying, now, wait a second. Wait a second. Let's put some more games out on the Nintendo Switch. And let's sell some stuff and make some money. Ubisoft is going to do the same. And that's why I believe that in the future, like the next Assassin's Creed and things like that, we're probably going to wind up seeing those on the Nintendo Switch. You know, with Capcom, they are, whether they've actually accomplished this or not right now, I don't know, but I know that it is their goal as far as everything they've said without saying it to get the uh, Resident Evil 7 running on the Switch. They have been working very diligently for, you know, since they've gotten this uh, Nintendo Switch dev kit in order to get the Resident Evil engine uh, running on the Switch. And if they do that, then it won't be an issue uh, getting whatever games that they have over at Capcom. So I think Ubisoft following their example and a lot of third 
third parties, especially big third party developers following the example. I believe that they are all going to eventually come around and we'll begin seeing versions of the Nintendo Switch uh, games, of, of these games on the Nintendo Switch. Now the catch here is that games that are made in 4K and all that, obviously the Nintendo Switch cannot handle a lot of that, um, those things. So it is going to have to be optimized for the Switch. But the plus side of this is that you will get these things on the go. So uh, you might not get the 4K experience, but you do get the playing the full version of this game on the go wherever you're at so you know and there's a place for both of those things in your gaming life uh, I know there is for me seeing things beautiful on the TV and you know experiencing them there and there's also a place for carrying you know the Nintendo Switch with me and playing it and not feeling like I'm trapped down or have to invest some insane amount of time in a game as sitting in one spot well anyway that's going to do it for this news update today guys thank you so much for watching I certainly appreciate you uh, if you haven't liked uh, this video go ahead and drop a like down there it's no problem it's just one click and it helps me out tremendously also if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do uh, this is a great channel for nintendo switch news i'm very passionate very positive and it's that's what it's all about i love nintendo and we're going to look at things from a positive perspective and uh, even bad things like assassin's creed not coming you know it's not the end of the world but it does give us a glimpse into the reality of what is in the future and uh, hopefully you know together we can enjoy this fill up that comment section below uh, if you'd like with how you feel about all this news anything that i've mentioned here i'd love to hear your thoughts on it we will see you guys next time thanks so much for your subscription thanks so much for your like and uh, adios